You don't get PTSD, which is a chemical disruption in the brain, unless you've had a TBI, traumatic brain injury, which is an anatomic problem in the brain. The two go hand in hand. What is the prevalence of traumatic brain injury in our country today, especially in the veterans community? Okay, um, I'll tell you, before COVID-19 came on the scene, the World Health Organization had traumatic brain injury listed as the fourth major health concern worldwide. So um, it is estimated that every year, somewhere between four and 10 million people sustain a traumatic brain injury. We know that from our veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan, one in four has at least one traumatic brain injury as part of their service. And among the Vietnam veterans, it is felt to be about the same. So right now we estimate about 750,000 veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan and probably another 100,000 from Vietnam. And my guess is of the 52 people that I see here, um, over half of us will have a history of traumatic brain injury, probably more than that, I would imagine. So you're saying uh, 750,000 uh, young veterans, those who have served since 2001. Correct. And, and another 100,000 maybe Vietnam veterans on and top of that. And maybe even more Vietnam. Maybe veterans. even more. Right, right. Why because, is this, go ahead. Why is, and, and how many of those are diagnosed? you know, fewer than 10%. Fewer than 10% are adequately diagnosed and treated in in the VA system. And um, that's really a tragedy. You know, it really is. I will say for the Vietnam veterans, anybody who has a diagnosis of PTSD had a traumatic brain injury because we have now proven through medical research that the prerequisite to developing post-traumatic stress disorder is having a traumatic brain injury. You don't get PTSD which is a chemical disruption in the brain, unless you've had a TBI, traumatic brain injury, which is an anatomic problem in the brain. The two go hand in hand. How do you experience your TBI? You know, by being very, very stupid. You know, that's what I have to say. I mean, um, it was amazing to me. Now, this would not have been my first traumatic brain injury. And I will say for everybody listening here, the number one predictor of a future brain injury is a past brain injury. That the more that you have, the more likely you are to have more. So um, I was putting Christmas decorations up. I was pushing a very, very heavy box underneath, you know, kind of a crawl space and forgot that when you have cardboard on thick pile carpet and it goes suddenly to, you know, cement, <laughs> you get this give way, which I did. And I literally, it was kind of like a helmet to helmet kind of injury. My head went directly into a brick wall. I mean, talk about the irony, you know, she hit a brick wall. Yeah, I literally did. Um, and I was uh, unconscious for somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes. Oh, from making this kind of more like a moderate TBI. Um, the thing that I will say, like I said, it was not something that was very heroic or courageous. It was something that was very stupid. Right. What I learned most about this is that when I finally kind of came to, um, I was unable to speak. Uh, I had no feeling over the right side of my body. I really couldn't see. And it was about 10 hours before somebody found me, you know, and, and went to the ER. And I really admire our young veterans who get a blast from an IED explosion. And they have people who've been blown up in front of them. And they've got to run to the scene and react and how they do that, I have no idea. Right, right. Well, let me ask you, let me just begin by asking, could you tell us, Dr. Gordon and, and I and me and, and, and everybody else, um, how you experienced your traumatic brain injury? We we're on our way back from a mission and we we're in a convoy. So I was, we were, I was driving the third truck of this convoy and we're on, we're on a um, hard tack road, like, um, uh, paved road, you know, not, not dirt, you know, like nothing could be buried underneath it. So I'm thinking like, this is okay. Um, but then there's this white Corolla that, that comes flying towards us. And like, I was like, this guy going to hit me. You had said that you, you were warned about a white Corolla, but you said like there were, you know, everybody drove a white Corolla. They were everywhere. I just have beef with Toyota. Cause they just make these like, I mean, like they're affordable, spacious, JD Power Associates award-winning, bomb-friendly vehicles. 
Chrisanne was saying that people with TBI are funny. I, I, I said that's when you know they're coming back, and I'm telling you, I'm dying over here. But I, so it it pulls up. It like this is him, and I'm driving this car, and it blows up right about here. Like I can almost like see see him. I guess saw his eyes, and like he he probably did a little too early. Uh, too early for him, not too early for me. Uh, right. And uh, so blew 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 up. Um, Blew my door off, uh, and uh, like I just remember feeling the heat and like seeing yellow, yellow tint, yellow green tint, and I remember covering my face. Uh, I didn't have my helmet strapped, and I just I couldn't breathe, and I just couldn't see. I just like remember like not thinking, like not knowing what happened for, it seemed like a few minutes, but it was probably a few seconds. And then, um, and then like, and then I realized what was happening. And, uh, you know, I thought like, when's it gonna hit? Like, when is like, when am I going to get hit with the shrapnel in my, my throat or my femoral or something that's not protected by my plate or my head or my, you know, whatever the case is. Um, and that didn't happen when, when the adrenaline wore off, what happened and, and, and what were your, you know, what did the doctor say was wrong with you? Um, well, they didn't send me to Bagram right away. I had to be like, I mean, I was like, you know, under observation, like I was just hanging out in my hooch for a little while. And then I was like, I told the SF medic, I was like, I like my, my burns were bad. Um, I was like, you know, this smells real bad, and I don't feel right. Can you, you say that right. a long time? Yeah. So, um, so they sent me, and then like the the SF like nurse practitioner, whomever, like somebody, he was like, I'm gonna have a talk with that. Like, I'm gonna have a talk with Taylor. Probably should have sent you earlier, but I mean, they initially thought like, okay, let's. They thought like you know it was a major TBI, and obviously I had burns. I will. Um, the burns were probably you know if if they wouldn't have. They eventually got abrasion, so I was like under general anesthesia, so it was a major surgery. Yeah. So, um, you know, like it was pussing. Like if they didn't do that, I would have significant scarring on the left side of my face. Right. Um, right. Can I ask? I want to ask both of you, especially Chris Ann, if somebody out there is listening and um, thinks that they, you know, might have a problem with uh, TBI, but they don't know what to do. What do you suggest they do? Okay, I'm going to pass that to Damien first, and then I'll answer because I think Damien knows what to tell him. Uh, I mean, if you, I would say first, if you're cozy with some of your former um, compadres, guys that you served with, you know, maybe a leadership. If you feel comfortable, talk to them first. Um, you know, I would talk to family if you're comfortable telling them. Um, if it's not accompanied by like thoughts of suicide, you know, like it's, um, this is a, you know, I give, obviously if it's accompanied by, you know, thoughts of harming yourself, killing yourself, I would make sure to reach out to whatever resource you can, veterans crisis line, um, the, you know, the VAED, whatever the case is, the, your local emergency department. But, I, you know, find someone that's willing to hear what you have to say. Like, this is something different. I felt different. I just need someone to listen to me. You don't have to um, give me solutions. I just need you to hear what I have to say. Um, this is not, I can't solve this on my own, but I just need at least like someone to hear. And like Christiane said, you're not crazy. Yeah. You know, th yeah. Things happen. The a TBI is difficult in the civilian world too. I mean, there's a lot of athletes who have issues as we know, you know, um, so it's difficult there too, but you really cannot solve it on your own. So I think after you get done talking to your friends, make sure one of them gets you to a physician who deals with this, you know. Um, we are the Resurrecting Lives Foundation. You can reach us at info at resurrectinglives.org. Uh, because I am a physician, you know, I can do, you know, uh, either this kind of a chat or a telephonic chat. I do it 
pro bono, I take a history, and then we hook you up to a place where somebody will help you either through the Veterans Administration, of which there are some that are really good, but as Damien, as you probably know, there are some that are really not. And luckily now we do have the Choice Act so we can hook you up to a physician in your area who also knows what to do about TBI. Let me just put the caveat here. Only 10% of all healthcare providers in the nation are trained to listen to, to diagnose and to adequately treat traumatic brain injury. So it's trying to get you hooked up to one of them. Our slogan is um, that we harness the power of storytelling to connect and heal and educate and inspire. I've got to tell you, Damien, and also Chrisanne, I mean, you have, um, I don't know if this helps with healing at all with you, but I do know it's been super educational. Um, you know, I, I think the people understand the experience of veterans better having just listened to you talk and your story. And it's also such an inspiration. I mean, to, to, to know that you're a social worker out there doing good work, helping other veterans, you've taken this trauma that occurred to you and you know, you're turning it around and helping others. Same with you, Chris Ann. I mean, that's why this is the greatest job in the world to hear inspiring stories like this. And um, well, those guys inspire me. So, yeah. you know, Kind of like that way around. They keep me going. Keep me going. They do. Absolutely.